that's time for the news and sport from the borders with David Ferguson. Good afternoon. The row over Mr. missing postal votes rumbles on, but after opening its HQ over the weekend so voters could pick up replacement packs, Scottish Borders Council is keeping the service running right up until polling day on Thursday. Angela Suave reports. With the final push for votes well underway, politicians of all parties are concerned people could miss out on casting their vote, particularly in places like the borders with school holidays underway. If you've applied for a postal vote in Roxburgh, Berwickshire and Selkirk, but haven't yet received your pack, you can pick up a replacement from council headquarters from half past eight until 5pm today, tomorrow and Thursday the day of the general election. They can be returned there or to contact centres in Gala Shields, Hoyk, Duns and Kelso or to any polling station before they close at 10pm on Thursday. If you live in Peeblesshire, however, part of the Dumfriesshire, Clydesdale and Tweeddale seat, get in touch with Dumfries and Galloway Council for replacement forms. An Albanian national has been remanded in custody for drugs offences after cannabis worth half a million pounds was found in Hoik. Dritan Katana appeared at Jedburgh Sheriff Court. The 41-year-old pleaded guilty to being concerned in the supply of cannabis and to producing a controlled drug at the b- former Beclue Hotel in Trinity Street in Hoik last autumn. He'll be sentenced on July 22nd at Selkirk Sheriff Court. The Divisional Police Commander for Lothian and Borders, Chief Superintendent Katrina Payton, has been appointed Assistant Chief Constable of Police Scotland. Superintendent Greg Banks will be acting Divisional Commander until her replacement is confirmed. Council Convener Watson McAteer congratulated Chief Superintendent Payton on her new job and on being awarded the King's Police Medal in the birthday honours, paying tribute to her excellent leadership. A Denham man has been accused of trying to extort £4,800 from neighbours. Scott Kelly and another man are charged with attempting to get the cash from the family in May, putting them in a state of fear and alarm. He is also accused of trying to contact a man from whom he'd been ordered to stay away. Kelly denies both charges and trial was set for September. Now, a tourist survey has found that three quarters of visitors to the borders rated their experience as either 9 or 10 out of 10. The 2023 survey also found that they spend, on average, three nights here in the borders, that scenery and history are the biggest draws, and almost half visit an abbey or historic house. Gordon Smith is Destination Development Director with Visit Scotland. Understanding the motivations and the experiences of our visitors is really essential in developing a world-class visitor destination. So we will continue to work with our tourism businesses and partners across the region to ensure that the uh, insights that we provide can help us in terms of planning, in terms of how we market the region, how we promote activity, how we work with businesses to improve the uh, quality of experience. The local council followed the Scottish Government in declaring a housing emergency last month and the impact of that was a key talking point at the Developing Young Workforce celebration hosted recently by Borders College. Julia Malloy, Chief Executive of Scottish Borders Housing Association, welcomed the chance to discuss new employment opportunities directly with teachers and pupils. It's really helpful bringing people together as employers, as educators and seeing young people as well joining in the discussion to find out what people are doing and think about what more we can do to support young people into to great careers and workplaces. We know there's going to be massive investment in construction in future years across the housing sector and also the demand for care is increasing. So we're going to have to work harder for young people to understand what the opportunities are and what the housing sector as an employer can do. Sport now and Kelso cyclist Oscar Onley has just come to the end of the fourth stage of his debut Tour de France, the Tour today traversing the Alps from Italy into France. He started today in 10th place in the race for the white jersey awarded to the top rider under the age of 26 and was 36th in the main field before the 140 kilometre distance and mountain climbs. He finished still the 10th young rider and he's moved up slightly to 35th overall. In an interview before he started today, Oscar reflected on a stunning first stage win by his teammate Roman Bardi. 
Yeah, it's been a, it's been a real crazy start to this tour. The morale's really high in the team, obviously, and I think we showed that yesterday in the sprint as well. Maybe the guys haven't had it quite the wrong way this year uh, so far in the sprints, but we were really on the front foot yesterday, and I think we were quite happy with how it went. And uh, so, yeah, we're taking that confidence from stage one and trying to go into all the stages like that. Now with the border's weather, here's Callum McCall. This evening will be mostly cloudy out there with some further showery bursts of rain edging in from the west. Overnight it will turn widely wet as heavy rain moves in from the west with some heavy downpours in the early hours. Lows of around 7 to 9 degrees Celsius. Tomorrow will be mostly cloudy and breezy with spells of rain and drizzle on and off. Skies brightening later in the day but it will be very cool for the time of year with highs of just 13 to 16 degrees Celsius. And we'll have more news from the borders at half past five, but now back to drive time. On digital radio, FM, your smart speaker, and on BBC Sounds, BBC Radio Scotland. You listen to Drive Time with Andrew Black. The time now, 36 minutes past four. Let's take you to the US where prosecutors say they're not going to oppose Donald Trump's request to delay the sentencing in his hush money case. That's uh, come amid efforts by Mr Trump's legal team to have his conviction around paying hush money to a porn actress overturned. Well, let's speak to Julia Manchester, who's a reporter at the Hill News site in Washington. And um, Julia, there are a few bits of um, legal uh, rulings and cases that, that have been happening in this case, but just uh, bring us up to date and where we are now. Yeah, so essentially this is the case that Donald Trump was found guilty on 34 uh, counts in, in New York. Now, this is connected to the Supreme Court ruling from yesterday in which the ruling, um, the high court said that uh, a president could be immune um from you know some liability for acts committed by presidents, so I guess that's further open to interpretation. But I think you know the delay of the sentencing or the prosecution saying they wouldn't oppose the de delay of the sentencing could be the first impact of this ruling. Now, we know that this ruling from the high court has been used in Trump's defense in his federal cases, um, many of it, the, which involve um, his handling of classified documents uh, as president and after president. And then, of course, um, his efforts to overturn the 2020 election results. So, just, you know, very interesting, um, you know, developments here in terms of Trump's legal saga. And one other interesting tidbit, tidbit that just came in is that uh, Rudy Giuliani, the former New York City mayor and Trump's former personal attorney, he's just been disbarred in New York for his efforts uh, to overturn the 2020 election results. Is there any suggestion that uh, Donald Trump wants to get the sentencing uh, delayed until after the presidential election? Or is that is that a bit too, bit too much of a stretch for him? You know, it would match up with his strategy so far that he would, um, you know, try to delay everything until after the election. So there.